uh, get rejected for Stanford and then get accepted for Harvard. You know, the, the, I've seen this happen. So I would say this: these events, where they are outside your control, when they are beyond your control, then of course you have to take an even attitude. You go to the airport, you are stuck five hours, you don't curse the airline for it. Just sit and, you know, have a good nap or something. But you have to develop that attitude. But unfortunately, we Indians have one big, big disease in our mind called, what if? <laughs> People to ask me, what if in the end all these criminals come out free from courts? So I said, why should I worry about that? It's going a long way off. In the beginning, they asked me, what if the Supreme Court rejects your petition? Well, the Supreme Court didn't reject my petition. Now, what if nothing happens? Well, lots of people started going to jail. More are going to jail. Then Anidhi Maran will go next month. After that, Chidambaram will go. And if Raja is gone, then some Rani must go too. If it's a Dili, if it's a Tamil Raja, then a Dili Rani must go. So, I mean, they are asking me. When I was fighting the emergency, I came to America because Jay Prakash Narayan and the RSS leader, the mother of Mule, he felt, they felt, what is the use of your being in underground in India? Nobody knows what you are saying. There is so much censorship. So you go to America, because America you know very well. And you campaign there, it comes on Voice of America, it comes on BBC, everybody will listen. So I came here. One question everybody asked, how will this emergency go? What if it doesn't go, what will you do? I said, I'll go old uh, fighting the emergency, but I'll st I'm going to continue. But I had no answer. How will this emergency go? I couldn't know. How did the emergency go? Indira Gandhi declared the election and she lost the election. Now, could I have foreseen that? One, if I had even told people one day Indira Gandhi will declare election and then she will lose it, they would have thought I have lost my mind instead. You see. <laughs> How can it be possible Indira Gandhi will lose the election? Same way today on the war against corruption. Uh, in the beginning they said nothing will happen. It's all drama. Ultimately now there is a lot of excitement. Now they have gone to the other extreme. Isko kyun nahi pakda? Isko kyun nahi pakda? You know, why is the Ambani's out? Why are the, these people out? Why is the... Put them all in! <laughs> now, it's a, it's a very tough task, you see, because when I go to court, the room is not bigger than this. This is a trial court, you know. I'm not talking about the Supreme Court, I'm talking about the trial court. Trial court is only big as big as this. And we have got already 23 accused, all top people. They bring in, each of them bring 10 lawyers. There are 250 lawyers uh, screaming away and I and the CBI are alone standing here, you see. I must say the judge is very good, so he, he doesn't bend easily. But he also we are benefited by the public mood. But this uh, feeling of getting defeated even before the battle starts. <laughs> British will never go away. This year, with now none of you will remember this. Read Times of India editorial of 1944. I think it was the month was June and the date was 21st. What did it say? Gandhi is a joker. He's made a mess because the Quit India movement had failed. It was, it got, and Britain, Britain was winning the war. So everybody thought, oh, now Britain, uh, Churchill will become re-elected Prime Minister and Britain will continue to rule India for a thousand years, which is what the British were saying. What happened? Britain, uh, Churchill was defeated in the election and Attlee was elected. Who could have foreseen that? So this mentality which is causes maximum stress in the Indian mind is, what if? <laughs> this you must wear out from. No talk about what if. I am working for this goal and that's all I see. Nothing else like Drona asked uh, Arjuna. That is what you have to have. So I would say that this question is, this, when, this, when you toss me about stress management, I can say 
that it is the anxiety which causes stress and anxiety arises because of your mind, you are constantly thinking of what if, what if, what if I get married and after getting married, the, my child is born with a twisted nose and she can't get married, what will I do then? I mean, don't think like that. There's no what if. Life is a question of taking risks. Risk aversion is an Indian problem. I asked my students at Harvard at the end of the term, when this term gets over around the first week of August, now when you go, what kind of job will you look for? I said you can become a businessman, start your own firm, become a billionaire, or you can fall flat on your face, there's a depression that comes in, or an economic slide that comes in, and your company goes bankrupt and you're out in the street. Whether you would prefer that kind of a job where you can either be a billionaire or, <coughs> or be on the street, or another job where you join a government office and your salary is fixed when you join, then every year 500 rupees will go up and the age of 60 you will get provident fund and you can build a house in Bangalore and retire. You know, they, they, this kind of job. Now, the American students will all ask me, what's the probability that I'll fall flat on my face? What's the risk there? 90% of the students will say, I want the first job. When I tell them, but that is guaranteed poverty, why do you want that? They said, at least it is, it is guaranteed, that is why we want it. <laughs> that mentality, we Indians have to get rid of. You got to take risk. And if you can't take risk, you can't have anxiety. What will be the outcome? What if this happens? What if that happens? No. This is precisely what Gita tells you. You have freedom, essentially, uh, essentially, for, you have freedom, essentially, for action. This, what, how do I then decide what to do? Here again, Krishna's last sloka on chapter 16, in chapter 16, shloka 24, uh, which I'll read out. He concludes that chapter, this is, the chapter concludes as follows. Ignoring the ordinances of the scriptures, he who acts under the impulsion of desire does not attain perfection or happiness or even his supreme goal. Therefore, the scripture is your authority in deciding what is to be done, what is not to be done. Knowing what is ordained by the scripture, you perform your duty. So, if there is a dharma, you have to fight it. It doesn't matter what the consequences are. If there is corruption, you have to oppose it. You can't think of what will happen, I will be ruined, this will be that. You got to fight. Of course, you got to fight intelligently. You must acquire the the skills of fighting. You can't just go uh, tomorrow go and decide how to fight. You have to organize and so on. So, broadly speaking, I will conclude by saying that what our Hindu values teaches us, no other, no other religion teaches you. Other religions may say, get yourself killed and go upstairs and you will find lots of lovely girls there. <laughs> One religion may say that, another religion may say something else. But this blueprint for action is there only in the Hindu religion, which tells you how to control stress. That is why today, Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, Ramdev, or Dayanand Saraswati, all their ashrams are full full of uh, foreigners, rich foreigners. And you find rich people here converting to Hindu point of view or at least accepting the Hindu concept. Because there you will find if you study it properly, the scriptures as Krishna says, all the prescriptions are there. And the fundamentals I have already told you. So what sort of person must you be free, must you be to be stress free? I would say First of all, you must develop your intelligence, which is unbounded intelligence. Unfortunately, everybody thinks intelligence means cognitive intelligence, which means how much physics you know, how much mathematics you know, 
how much uh, MBA, uh, how much business management you know.